Blog Talk Radio. Are you curious of what may go bump in the night? Or shadowy secrets that may never come to light? Then tune in to Disclose Your Now. I'm your host, the Pied Piper, co-hosted by Texas Rebel. Tune in and let's get real. Brought to you by the Enlightenment Evolution Network. The opinions, commentary, and views that are expressed here at Disclosure Now or the guest of the show are not necessarily reflections of the view of the Enlightenment Evolution Network. Thank you for tuning in to Disclosure Now. Tonight, we have a great show and an awesome panel in the studio tonight. They're with us to discuss religion's origins and what part ETs could have played in forming them. So right now, I will let them introduce themselves and what their religious background is. So let's go around and do that. Hey guys, my name is Devin Porter. Uh, I have a background, uh, a strong Christian. Uh, I was a big if you will, quotes, Bible thumper quite some time ago. I'm Della Rath. I was confirmed a Lutheran. Okay. Well, I'm the Pied Piper, and I was raised a Christian. Um, and uh, I went to <clears throat> Sunday school for a long time, and, and then I broke off, and I started studying multiple religions to try to find my truth. Hey, I'm Texas Rebel. I was raised Christian, and Kind of like William, I broke off and never. I still hadn't found the truth. Right on. Well, <clears throat> let's see here. Well, okay, to start with, I would like to say that all our views differ greatly. I am absolutely sure of that. But we can have a great time debating, and I would like to add that no one's beliefs will be attacked or are wrong. And any thoughts our guests have or our callers may have will be respected. And I know that religion can be a powder keg of an issue, and I hope all of you listeners will join the debate. So let's start. Our phone number is 347-215-8586, and here shortly we'll be uh, going to uh, questions. But uh, I'll give you a little bit more background from myself. Uh, I was raised a Christian and everything that goes along with that. Uh, I attended Sunday school for years, then attended church regularly up until around 13. Uh, then I went on a spiritual type journey, just researching all other religions. And uh, I want to emphasize this <laughs> in all ways. I am not a scholar, religious scholar by any means. But I have studied many religions uh, over the past years, and it has led me to more than one enormous conclusion. One, that man was not smart enough to write any of the religions. <laughs> and I mean all of that stuff. Um, it's been corrupted and twisted. So in my belief, there's nothing that's actually the word of God, whatever that God may be. Uh, but I'm going to defer to Devin for a second, and I'd like him to give a little detail uh, on his backstory here. Um, well, where do I start? Um I attended a church actually quite heavily uh, in Three Rivers, Michigan, uh, Riverside Fellowship. I mean, at the time, I really thought it was a really solid church. I mean, I, I felt like everybody there was friendly and, and just getting into everything. I was hardcore into it. I was doing everything that I was there, helping all the time. Sundays, I was there. Um, freaking, what am I thinking here? Sundays, I would go to Sundays, I would go to Wednesdays, I was involved heavily into the church. Well, the problem with the church is the fact that I left for the Marine Corps, I enlisted in the Marine Corps, and something happened that I didn't go in the Marine Corps, and I did wind up going into the Navy, so in one sense, I still did what I set out to do, but I came home, 
all right? And when I came home, there was nobody there behind me. This church that supposedly was supposed to be my friends, I, I knew everybody in that church, uh, from the pastor all the way down to who, the kids in the Sunday school. Everybody knew who I was, so it wasn't like, hey, who's this stranger? No, they knew exactly who I was. I would go to this church, but when I came back, my life literally fell apart. Uh, I got attacked left and right. I was worthless, uh, and as I fell into a deep... Where did those attacks come from? Uh, they started out, uh, originated with my parents, and then I also was uh, in a very strong relationship with a girl who also attended the church with me, and those attacks also came from her parents. Now... Without getting into a long story, I come home, I sit around a table, and I have uh, my parents on one side, I have her parents on the other side, my parents are telling me I'm worthless, and then I have her family telling me I'm just playing the church for fools and that I really don't believe the things that I believed at the time. Okay, great. Well, this totally devastated me. I'm an 18-year-old kid who I, I believe strongly. I mean, I, I did this for years. So it borderlined on almost, I mean, you, you believed everything in the church. You were almost sort of uh, like brainwashed by them. Is that correct? Oh, I, I would I would definitely classify myself as brainwashed at this time. I mean, uh, the church, they, they, I'm not sure how to explain it, but it definitely, I would have to say that I definitely was brainwashed. In but it. you believe in God now, though. Even though that, that bad experience <laughs> happened, you still believe in uh, in God. Yes, I, I believe very strongly in God. Uh, other people see him as a supreme being, but I believe in God. I believe in the existence of God. I believe in the existence of Christ and that Christ died on the cross for us uh, and uh, that all of our sins are washed away. But I, I don't stop with that uh, in that sense that I also believe in a more spiritual. And some aspects of churches and uh, the Bible, they believe that divination is a sin. Uh, tarot cards, things of that nature. I, I don't, that's a part of the religion that should be there. Uh, and it was lost many centuries ago. I, I want to make a point, too, that I'm by no means a scholar. Uh, I don't know details and things like that. I've done a little bit of research, and I know that early Judaism uh, had a sense of mysticism to it, that they believed in the divination and things of that nature, and I do believe strongly in these things. Well, if you go, uh, you know, of course, the, some of the main religions today have broke off from, from the Abraham uh, of the Old Testament and everything, um, but I believe some of this, the mysticism you're speaking of is like, like what the uh, the Jewish people would call the Talmud, which is yes. like is like spells and 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 uh, incantations, stuff like that. And, and that's and that's exactly the things that I do believe in because uh, with that you can't really believe in that and not uh, you can't believe in the Bible and not believe in the other aspects of it because they are all one and the same. Just like you can't believe uh, that the sun rises, but the moon's not going to come up with it. I mean, it's one and the other all in the same. Okay, uh, I'd like to turn the, the, the mic over to Della for just a second and have her explain a little bit of her experience uh, being a Lutheran growing up. Well, basically my parents kind of forced us to go to church and confirmation and so on. And once I became an adult... I kind of looked around a little bit and decided that me sitting at home and reading the Bible and following its preachings is more likely believable than what they have to preach in the building at church. Right, than what they, they, they yell from the pulpit. Yeah. And one thing you guys were talking about with the spells and incantations, you know, Christmas and some of the other religious holidays are based on, is it Wiccan? Uh, pagan. Pagan. Yeah, yeah we go with another one. Yeah, uh, cr Christianity and uh, all the offshoots from it uh, is is uh, heavily paganized, and they tried to remove a lot of it, um, and it didn't quite work. So a lot of the symbology is still there, um, and uh, I'll get into that a little bit later with some of my beliefs. But continue. You had something. And well, uh, 
pagan paganism that that's another big point with that is uh all of the pagan you you look at the pagan religion and let let's go way back in Roman times and a lot of that was shut down. The Romans started out as pagans, but for some reason they decide, oh well, we're going to be Christians now. Okay, well it really is all one and the same. You, you can look through a lot of the pagan beliefs and things of that nature, and the stories uh, transpose over into Christianity stories. Yeah, well, there's paganism there, was first. Yeah, and the Christians well, switched over. Yeah, to see now I, now here's the thing: things. divination being divine. They, uh, it's not a stigma, but there's like there's certain things that that prove that you're divine or prove that you are are legit, which would be uh, born on December 25th, dying on the cross or uh, dying and coming back three days later, rising somebody from the dead, having disciples. I mean, basically, if we're talking about Christ now, there was many Christ figures that, uh, you know, there's no proof these people walked the earth either, but uh, there's divine people that supposedly existed that had the exact same elements of the Jesus story repeated. Uh, Buddha, um, Horus, Krishna, uh, and, you know, these are, are just a few. There's there's a whole bunch. Um, and, uh, you know, I, it tries to prove divinity by attaching these things, um, which clearly came before the story of Jesus. And one other thing, uh, I'm a big conspiracy guy, of course, being in Definitely. disclosure now. Um, but there's a conspiracy of the Flavian dynasty. Um, basically, it's a theory that maintains that the Flavian dynasty, a Roman uh, 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 <laughs> aristocratic family, fabricated the Jesus narrative as an attempt to quell Jewish rebellion in Palestine during Rome's occupation of the land. So basically, turn the other cheek, not being violent. That was a movement that was placed in the society to quell rebellion. Um, and uh, I am not sure if that is fact or not, but there's a few documentaries that, that point out a whole lot of uh, excellent information on that. Uh, Reb, what, could you tell us a little bit about your background? All right. Uh, as a young kid, I went to church. On this school, just like most everyone else did, and uh, uh, when I when I become about thirteen, fourteen, I had a uh, family member talk me into going to one of those uh, tongue talking churches, spirit filled church, and I went there a couple of years. Church? Yeah, it was a Pentecostal church, and man, these people run up and down the pews and. Flung, you know, they fall on the floor and flop around like a fish, and well, they were they were filled with the spirit. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, I started asking questions. You know, I got to where I was reading the Bible pretty regular, and I'd ask this person, or I'd ask the Sunday school teacher. Nobody could answer any of my questions, so I, I ended up talking to the preacher about it, and. He really didn't have an answer for it, but the answer he'd give me, I, I wasn't real comfortable with it. So I had an uncle that was a Baptist preacher. I ended up going to three or four preachers, and they all had different answers, and I just couldn't get the answer I wanted, so I kind of just kind of fell out of the church-going scene altogether. Right on. Well, my, my backstory is very similar. I, I, I went to Sunday school uh, I learned, I absorbed it. You know, I thought that my my eternal soul was in balance. Um, yeah. And I I truly thought that there was uh, a a bad place you would be sent, hell, fire, uh, whatever. I, I was a, I was in a regular Christian church. It wasn't a Catholic. Catholics used to be very big on you're going to burn, um, but. Yeah. But regardless, though, I, I had questions the same as you did, and they couldn't answer them. And instead of answering them that to where I could understand them, it was you have to have faith. And that always kind right. of rubbed me the that that always kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Um, well, you know, with I uh, we we talked a little bit of uh, Catholicism, and with that, and by no means am I saying any one religion is wrong or right because nobody knows what's right or wrong. Right, but 
I have my own opinion, just like you have your opinion. Exactly. My opinion is is that, uh, you know, when it gets into uh, ancient religions, uh, I believe that ETs, I believe the UFO phenomena, I believe that stuff has been around here since the beginning. I believe that some of that could have influenced some of these religions that popped up. But if you sit six people, okay, back when, let's just start with the Christian Bible, uh, back when the New Testament was supposedly being written or was the the events were happening during it, uh, it was 50 years before anybody actually wrote down anything. And the books of the Bible aren't written by the disciples. They may be named after some of them. They, they, they were not written by them. So here's just my personal opinion, is that how can something be the absolute word of God when I can sit eight people in a circle and I can whisper in one person's ear and by the time it gets back, just out of eight people, the, the old it's different. Phone, phone talk. Thing. Yeah, the it, old phone game. It, That's it, what I'm saying. Like, if you go around and you whisper donkey and by the time it comes back, it's cat. It's like, really? What, what, it's that Where did not you, even... How did you get cat? Well, here's the thing, though. If nobody wrote anything down from that time period, let's say that I do believe Jesus was a flesh and bone man, and I and I don't believe that, but let's say I did. Anything Jesus taught, anything Jesus said, would have to have been told verbally <coughs> for years and years and years, and then finally written down. And when it was written down for us to get it today, it had to be transcribed. Well, you're you're speaking. You're also speaking of the Bible, and, and don't get me wrong. I I do believe in a lot of things in the Bible. But here's here's a big problem I have with the Bible, is it says I I can't I'm not gonna quote it word for word because I don't have one in front of me. But somewhere it states in there that you need to believe everything in the Bible. The problem is is just as I uh, pipe, what do you call it? Pipe, pipe, yeah, pipe Piper, I uh, stated is that it's man wrote it. Man makes mistakes. We we are not infallible. God is infallible. God doesn't make mistakes. However, we as man, we're we're born and we make mistakes from the day we're born. So so I, I want to make something clear though. Um I'm not an atheist. And what I I do not believe in any of the religions that have been written down. I believe everybody got it wrong. Um as a matter of fact, um I I think that all of them are wrong. But I don't discount the possibility of an all-powerful creator, somebody who created matter out of nothing, uh, or some entity that created matter out of nothing, and he's observing it, is seeing what happens. Like, I, I don't discount that fact, but if, I believe everybody has gotten it wrong. The rules, you know, this and that. Just as an example, when you go, when I was a kid, they said, God gives you free will. And that's a gift he gave to you, so you don't have to love him if you don't want to. Well, I'm a spiritual person, not a religious person. I believe that religious people are seeking some type of reward, and I believe spiritual people, like myself, is seeking total understanding. Uh, and there, But there's a limit to what you can actually understand, too. I mean, it, you be as spiritual and, and don't get me wrong i am um, that's my point there's right. a part where you can't understand it you know just like uh, you know on an et show a while back i made the uh, example of you're not going to pull your car over to the side of the road and talk to an anthill and tell them why you're driving by it oh yeah definitely not you know and, and if you did the ants wouldn't understand so for us to try to dictate what this all-powerful being wants needs would like to see. Okay, well, let, let's touch let's touch base on that with the fact that this is part with ET and how did how could ET have influenced that? Well, let let's just go strictly to the Bible that this is what mostly people read. Let's go back to Exodus. How did the people eat? How were they fed? It says I uh, a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night and manna fell to feed them, and I believe it also uh, provided light. In something else, but uh, but the Ark of the Covenant, okay. This this, and I know there's documentaries regarding this stuff, and, and I've seen a few of them, so I'm not going to try and quote verbatim. But the bottom line is there is some sort of power source there, and I believe very strongly that uh, when um 
the walls of Jericho were broke down. It was not broke down because guys went there and battered it and because guys literally sang at the top of their lungs. No, it was some sort of sonic device, uh, whether it was in our own comprehension of what actually was going on. No. Okay, but what is the possibility that they had a sonic device or that it never happened? <laughs> the, the possibility that it never happened is baloney because it definitely happened. Oh, and you take the Bible as a as a scholarly like a actual I, I don't, history. I, I take I don't take it literally. I take it as okay it, a footnote per se. Okay, we know there's been documentaries that we know that the walls of Jericho were brought down. Okay. okay. Okay, but what I mean though is, if that's a story, if that's a parable, you're right. supposed to take a message from it. The message would be, "Have faith in your God; He can do anything." Exactly. But right. What is that God? That God. But did is those e. walls e. really fall then? Yeah, I do believe that the walls <laughs> fell. Oh, that's and, what and, I'm asking. Okay, I, I follow what you're <laughs> saying there, but I do believe that the walls fell completely. But I don't believe that they fell because a bunch of men circled the walls of Jericho and blew their horns. Exactly. No bullshit. Uh, I believe that there was some sort of extraterrestrial um, involvement in that and that there was uh, a device that helped them. And yes, it may have required the horns well, and things of that nature for it to work. Speaking of the Exodus, I, I don't want to be the doom and gloom guy, but I, I can say this, that uh, if the Exodus happened and there was a pillar of cloud by day and a, a pillar of a fire by night, and it did feed them and stuff, absolutely that would have to be some sort of ET technological uh, craft or something. Now, what were they doing in the desert all those years, though? They weren't lost. They weren't roaming around. They were building an army because their God said that's the promised land, and it was occupied. They had to go take it by force. And, and that's and that's exactly. I mean, you look at story after story after story in the Bible, and that's exactly what happened. They went from each spot, and they just kicked out the people. Well, how are you going to do that? You're going to do it with an army. Well, it goes from one generation to the next that all of a sudden they've got a massive army. Really? I mean, obviously they had to train them somehow. Well, rather it be extraterrestrials or God that gave us these uh, divine messages, they were absolutely corrupted and twisted. That's my belief. Look at the Maya, for example. If an ET civilization or, or an ET uh, was flying around in his craft and said, that's a great spot, I'm going to land and I'm going to teach these people some mathematics, I'm going to teach them some, uh, I'm going to teach them uh, calendar type stuff about the, all, all the knowledge that, that the Mayans had that they actually shouldn't have. Uh, where in the hell did they come up with blood sacrifice? I can't see a high-tech civilization or uh, uh, a deep thinker, so to speak, that would land and try to teach, and somehow we come out with blood sacrifice. Now, that's the type of thing that I mean by twisted. Um, I, I, I think that things have been uh, uh, corrupted. What do you think, uh, Texas Rebel? I, I totally agree. Uh, I think some come down and try to teach them something, and they didn't quite understand, and they took it upon themselves to do what they thought was right. Well, I'd like to know where the where can we get a hold of like the lost books from the Bible? Yeah, you know, speaking were, of like the Dead Scrolls. No, Dead sea scrolls. Let, her, let her keep talking. I know what well, she's talking yeah, about. Yeah, the Dead Scrolls, and then when they went to make the Bible. There were so many books that were eliminated. Yeah, there wasn't it yeah. wasn't canonized. The King James, he got together and decided to decide what was going to be canonized and what wasn't going to be canonized. And and that that goes back into what you were saying again. That's that's man. That's yeah. man's hand into it. And, and absolutely right. There had been so many books of the Bible that were just completely and utterly left out because oh well, no, we we don't want this. It, it doesn't fit into what we believe. How how can we can okay. Here's a whole other thing. Uh, a lot of religion is about controlling people, controlling what they think, how they do it, uh, what's right, what's wrong. Well, you know what? We as a society, we we decide what's right and what's wrong, okay? But yet, over the years, we've allowed religion to decide what it is we feel is right and wrong. Uh, with that being said, that also goes into another belief I have is the fact that organized religion is just a joke. Because even in the Bible, uh, somewhere it states, Jesus said that bring uh, bring the masses, or you go to the masses. 
It didn't say bring the masses to my church. No, you go to the masses. So why why are we gotta build these huge cathedrals so that uh, these people fill the pews just so that we can teach them and brainwash them? Because I, I do believe I was brainwashed at one point. And when I went to church, you know, like I said, my parents basically forced us to go. It seemed like you looked around the church. And everybody was looking around the church to see who was outdressed by the other and who was in tattered oh. clothing and, and, and who had, who had the new hairdo. And a, it's bull. That's a bunch of crap. That's not why you should be in the and that, church. Yeah, no, you, you should be there to right. worship. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, um, you know, religion had to have started either by a uh, E.T. presence or a God presence, because I don't discount an all-powerful being. That's very possible. That could have been uh, what it was. But more than likely, I believe that religion started uh, by trying to explain the natural world around them or from fear, fear of what's next. I mean, what what does it mean to die? Well, now, people fear that. And the thing is, is I believe that some of this stuff was created around that to reassure people, to make them feel uh, comfortable or safe or, or, or stuff like that. Now, also, I believe that religion was created to control, um, control the masses. Like, <clears throat> uh, when I went to church, they said, God gave you free will so you don't have to love him. But if I offered everybody listening here tonight two choices... I said, you have free will, and you have two choices. I can take you out for ice cream, or I will light you on fire. It's totally up to you. You have a free choice. It's all on you. Now, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to pick the ice cream because nobody wants to catch on fire. So that, that that's kind of a red herring for me. That, that, that That's, you know... And I follow you on that. With that, too, is also, I mean, and, and a lot of it's in the Bible, too, that, well, let's dangle that carrot. Let's dangle that carrot in front of you. Do you do you want the carrot? Let, let's tempt you, tempt you, tempt you. And, okay, well, you know, uh, we are beings that are make mistakes. We're beings that are going to screw up. And you know what? We're beings of um, desire. We we want to fill those desires that are in our hearts. So with that being said, well, I want that cupcake. I'm going to go have that cupcake. Now, is it necessarily good for me? No, it's not necessarily good for me. Well, I'd like to touch on something, too. Speaking of the matters of the heart, you know, um, now religion, at least most, in my opinion, have been hijacked by hateful people. Uh, Muslims, um, some, some Jewish communities, uh, I've watched some absolutely horrendous things uh, of basically hate speech coming from Israel. Uh, but, but yeah, most religions have been hijacked by hateful people who hides behind fear in the fact that their God is the one hating people. It's not them. So they can avoid responsibility or impact that it may have. It's very sad and it's also a red herring, period. If your God hates gays, colored people, or has no tolerance for other religious thoughts, then you're a bigot. Don't push it off on the deity you worship. And that's exactly it. Because uh, with that, it goes into a couple of things. Pied Piper saying this and Della saying as far as the way people view. There's a lot of judgment. But again, we can take the Bible. We can take one verse out of the Bible. And I can put it in front of probably five different pastors. And each one of them are going to read it different. And are going to explain it differently. Because again, it's a sentence that it's how you interpret that sentence. And, and that's the Bible. Everybody's interpretation is different. But even if I throw the Bible completely out of there, and let's go to, like, for example, the Quran. Uh, and, again, I know nothing about the Quran, but I know there's a lot of similarities in the Quran as there are in the Bible. Well, let me say this about the Quran. Uh, there's something that's very, very interesting to me, and it also has to tap into the E.T. type thing. And it's this. Uh, back in Genesis... Um, the angels came down onto the daughters of men and found them attractive. They ended up having half-breed children called the Nephilim. Um, the Nephilim was a scourge, I guess uh, you could say, and that was part of the reason why Noah, why the planet was flooded, to, 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 to get rid of them. Uh, but the reason that the women have to wear the burqa is from that right there. It's from they're afraid 
uh, and they may contest this. I, I I don't follow the Quran, but I, I have researched it. But basically, it's like this. Uh, they're afraid that the angels are going to come down and create half-breed children with, with their women. So instead of tempting the angels, they have to completely cover their body and their face. Um, that, I would have to say, is uh, very counterintuitive. It's It's a hot... I mean, where most of the Muslims are, it's very hot. I couldn't even imagine having, having to do that. It, it's very, it's it's an extreme view too. It, again, it goes to the interpretation, as I was saying. But it's an extreme view, just as you you have, as we all like to call them, fanatics. I mean, every religion has a fanatic. Jews have fanatics. Uh, Islam has fanatics. I call uh, them zealots. Zealots, I mean, zealots, fanatics, uh, however you want to look at it, it, it's pretty much all the same. But these are people who are exactly as Pi Piper said, is uh, they're, they're taking it and they're blaming, well, their own fears on, well, this is the deity says it. You know what? There's few things that your deity if, will say, if we can say, for example, the Bible, there's very few things that actually says you can't do. But in the same token, the Bible also contradicts its own self because in uh, Old Testament, you have it's okay to do certain things. In the New Testament, it's not necessarily okay. Or in the Old Testament, it's okay to do a certain thing. In the New Testament, it's not. Well, there's many, many, many contradictions, but I have to say that the biggest one is thou shall not kill, which I don't think you need religion to figure out you don't kill each other. But thou shall not kill, unless your government sends you to war, and then it's okay. Get as many of them as you can. Kill, kill for God's purpose. All the crusades. I mean, really, God did not say all, go kill everybody. All religions can be compared for fanaticism and for their their ill will towards man. All of them can. Uh, I'm just afraid that religion uh, is going to hold us back somewhat from evolving in some some sense. We need to go back to the Native American way of life, Whoa. where you lived off the land, and when you went to war, you took little patches of hair off the scalp. They don't scalp people, right? No. Where they cut like across the forehead, that, and that's the, you know, and take the whole head of hair. They took like one little inch pieces of hair off the person's head, and that's how they won. Counted their victories by how many of these little pieces of scalp they took. Yeah, well, that's kind of propaganda. They, you know, the whole scalping thing where where that they was leave the French. Right. Well, they but they attached it to the natives so that they could yeah. make them not human. They were animals. They you could go kill them. Well, you know, I I I, I believe a lot. I I don't know a lot of the. Indian culture, but I do know that in that culture, there's there's a lot of similarities. And uh, going with similarities, what I mean by that is, we'll, we'll go back because we were talking a lot about Christ, is that there's similarities in Christ, and he shows up in the Indian culture. They've got stories regarding something yeah, no, similar no, no, no. to that. You, right now, you're stepping into... Uh, I, I, I wouldn't say that all religions are are cult li are cults, but I'd say they're all cult like. And I'll get into what you were just about to say. Um, but like, okay, how civilized are we really? How civilized are we really? Uh, and I say this because people cram themselves in a building and they pretend to drink the blood of a two thousand year old god. They pretend to eat his flesh. Are, hello, are we on planet Earth? I don't understand. I really don't. I don't understand that. But what what Devin was just speaking of was the Book of Mormon, the book Joseph Smith. Uh, I, I'm not going to go completely into detail into him. Uh, I believe Joseph Smith was a fraud, but he basically wrote a new New Testament, and he said that uh, the Indians there was a lost tribe of of the Jews, and that. Uh, I'm still researching that. Yeah, and there was uh, hidden tablets, and he found these tablets, and he deciphered them magically without knowing the language and uh, all this stuff. And 
Well, so I continue. Mean, but you're even, talking about even, the Book of Mormon. That's what well, speaks of okay. when De- and, Jesus died. He showed up to the Indians and started preaching there. Well, okay. Well, I I didn't necessarily. I mean, and maybe I'm confusing it with something else that I read, which I I do quite often. So, but even then, okay. Let Let's go back to even further back to one of the oldest civilizations. You You've got the Egyptians, okay, in that, and uh, Pied Piper spoke of Horus. Okay, this is a very similar character to that of Christ, but we're, we're talking probably the one of the oldest um, uh, cultures that we actually know of. Now, granted, there are older cultures that we have very little knowledge of, but the Egyptians we can actually dig up and still see stuff about. And with this, but even okay, even with the Egyptians, uh, well, let's go there. We've got pyramids, we've got the Sphinx. How was all this stuff made? Well. Uh, with that, obviously, it wasn't done with the technology that we think they had back then. Okay, well, you sp- speaking of Horus, let me give some of the details about Horus. Um, he was born of a virgin, only begotten son of God Osiris. Uh, birth was heralded by the star Sirius, the morning star. Uh, ancient Egypt paraded a, ma- uh, a manger and a child representing Horus through the streets at the time of winter solstice, December 21st. In reality, he had no birth date. He was not a human. Um, uh, death threat during infancy. Uh, Herut tried to have Horus murdered. Uh, very, very similar to Jesus. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, basically, he brought somebody back from the dead. He had 12 people follow him around. Um, him and his mother had to flee. Uh it, it it's it's uh, he was crucified he descended into hell and then was resurrected three days later and uh, that's you know that is almost identical to Christ oh now well, let let's I okay because uh, we're referring and just we are referring to stuff that is actually we can document stuff that we're referring to for example even with that the the story of Christ speaks of being baptized and that his baptizer was beheaded. Well, Horace it, it even speaks um with regarding that that he was b- baptized uh, around the age of thirty and his subsequent subsequent fate of his bapti- baptizer was beheaded. Yeah, he there, walked on water. He cast out demons. He healed the sick. He restored sight to the blind. He was crucified. He descended into hell and was resurrected. Now, talking about uh, Christianity and the Old and New Testament and the uh, pagans. Uh, it's my understanding, at least, that when they when they talk about um, being crucified and died and coming back uh, three days later, it's basically the solstice. It is um, uh, the southern crux in the sky and stuff. Uh, it does look like we have a caller that's calling in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take their their comment or their question now. Um, it'll take just a second. And hello, you're on with Disclosure Now. How are you tonight? I'm wonderful. How are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing pretty good. Having a nice little talk here. I am just fascinated with it. There's so many belief systems bouncing around with you guys. And it's just really good that you guys are working this out and bringing this stuff to the table. Because it all has to be looked at in a way of preference, of beliefs, of subjective ideas. And it's really cool. This, like When you pointed out that idea about the Bible, and if you read the verse from the Bible and every person interprets it, that is because it's subjective. And everything about our world is 100% sub- subjective. And it's who you put your authority in that creates the idea of what you believe, what your reality will be. And uh, I think that if you just step back and look at the big picture, the reason why we gave ourselves religion to jump to that is to understand that we're gods, that we have an idea of being. Eh, If you want to call yourself God, you can do that. But without that knowledge of religion, of gods, then we don't understand that there's something beyond us. And then, of course, you arrived, then society took it in and chopped it up and diced and sliced the books, 12 books in the Vatican right now, sitting there, waiting to get exposed one day. Maybe it'll come out, maybe it won't. And, uh, you know, to enslave people. But 
I don't think it was done on purpose to enslave people. I think that was the result of idea of separation and power so that people can feel wanted or justified and because everyone is fearful, that kind of idea. But I guess I just wanted to say it's a really good, really good expansion on your all's part, and I just well, am fascinated by it. I have a quick Make question sense? for you. Uh, what yeah, what is your base religion? Absolutely. Uh, I appreciate your call. I, I, I appreciate your point of view. And uh, Devin has a question for you if you have a, have a, have a second. Oh, Are you still there, bud? I, I, have, okay. I have all the time. Go ahead. Uh, what What is your base religion, if you don't mind me asking? My base religion? Is that what you said? Yeah. What What, what uh, started you on your path, I guess, is what his question would be. Right. Well... To give you background, I was a little bit of uh, seeking uh, Greek Orthodox with my parents and okay. kind of Christian, but not real strong. And then I became, in 1988, a born-again Christian and found that was a train wreck because there was just <laughs> too, many things, too many things that said, okay, this, what, I, what I trusted, what I trusted, and this is what is detrimental to society is I trusted my own authority, and everyone put the authority, or religion took authority out of the people and put it in a godhead, a figurehead, a priest, a preacher, uh, a minister, or whatever. And there's your speaker for God when all through the Bible it says, you got, God, the kingdom of heaven was within, so you can speak and are directly with what an exact image of God. So that, let's say, Christ idea with being born again and that kind of thing just didn't resonate with me. That was my truth. So I went beyond and then I forgot about it for a while. Then I've been on this spiritual awakening. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the idea now of we are creators of our own individual universe and we are the exact image in the one mind of God and we are individual singularities of that choosing our reality and we all chose this reality to, let's say, Explore parts of parts of ourself. I'm what you call. Well, uh, I don't know if you know who I am, um, but I'm Roxanne. I used to have a radio show here on Saturday morning, and then uh, I don't anymore. So Roxanne Swain, Heart Odyssey of Ascension. That's me. So um, my standpoint is that each and every one of us were created. The Creator chose each one of you to be an individual perspective of the mind of God, of that of the Creator. And in that, we have the fundamental rights to choose as we choose, untethered, un, let's say judged, unconditional, to figure out ourselves in the idea of evolution. And I know that we want to change people's view because from a common sense love point of view, you look at the world and you go, what the hell are you thinking? However, that person is subjective to their understanding on their experience of life, and they're doing their best, although it may not look best in our thing. But at one time, maybe if you believe in reincarnational idea, maybe at one time that was our best. And we are, let's say, further along in our reincarnational idea to solve problems of the world, not to fight and fire with fire, because you only get fire, with Love, with allowance, with that kind of idea. So I stand from the standpoint of everything is love. It's created in love. And I'm not talking about the romantic love of the definition because that in and of itself is limiting. I'm talking about the creation of everything is conscience and we are all the unum of one. That is what I believe in. And, you know, we can call it a religion, but that to itself automatically throws in some dogmas and it has to be a separated standpoint. And separation is what's killing us. Because any time you don a flag, any time you say I'm a country or a race or a creed, then we separate ourselves from each other. And every Absolutely. single thing for me is one. Go ahead. Absolutely. And I appreciate uh, you calling in, and that's what this show is about. It's about inclusion. Whatever, whatever your background, whatever your view uh we we're not here to judge and we just want to explore all these possibilities yeah. and cr and create together and it's a beautiful thing and i appreciate you calling in and uh uh you you had a wonderful point of view thank you for sharing it with us well i wanted to share and that's what i wanted to tell you is i love 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 that you guys are expressing you're you're putting it out there and then you see in the perspective of the mirror 
what else is next? What else is different about myself? Everyone knows 10 years ago we're not the same person. We're a new person now. We're evolving. And without you expressing your understanding of yourself in the idea of a, a, the mirror, we call it, here in the ascension right. idea, then you don't get to see the reaction of yourself with your expression. So, again, well, that, that's my highest it. joy you guys are speaking it. I love it. Well, that, that's definitely, I mean, life is, it's really about us learning from our own mistakes, too. I mean, and religion, unfortunately, has a big role in that. I, I guess I really can't say unfortunately, but religion definitely has a big role in that, in the fact that there there's some base lessons that, yes, we need to learn. We, we need to have some base morals. If we don't have those base morals, we, we really don't know what's right from wrong. Uh, and granted, a lot of that is taught from our own parents in regards to that as being what's right. It's not okay to cut yourself. Well, there's like a... That. There's a saying, you know, we are only the sum of our parts, and those are emotional yeah. parts. And many, uh, many of us go through traumas and things like that. But it, you, you come through the crucible on the other side, a changed person, uh, stronger, more spiritual. Uh, sometimes you have to go through these things. And uh, <clears throat> We're going to take a break in just a second to play some announcements. And I wanted to thank you again, Roxanne, for calling in. Well, my, let's see, my highest joy that you allowed this. So keep rocking it, guys, and I'm on the air listening to you. I love you guys. All, All right, right. Thanks, bud. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to head off to some announcements from the EEN Network and what may be coming up. Maybe there's a show you would really like to tune into. And I am looking. For, there's the announcements right there. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Karen Newman from the show About what Oneness. And here's in? what's coming up on the Enlightenment Evolution Network 1 and 2, starting on Monday, November the 3rd, until Sunday, November the 9th. Simply put, Rob Gauthier, founder of the EEN and the host of the show that started it all, the Enlightenment Evolution Hour, has put together the greatest metaphysical radio network ever. Seven days a week, we have shows that will aid you on your path to enlightenment, evolution, and ascension. On EEN 1, Mondays at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is Heart to Heart Talk Radio with your host, Daniel Scranton. Join Daniel and his featured guests discussing a wide variety of metaphysical topics. Daniel channels the Creators, the Hathors, Ophelia the Fairy, and Archangel Michael, and the latest, the Unicorn Collective. Daniel and his guests will take phone calls and questions, and it's sure to generate high-frequency discussions. You can find more about Daniel at his website, danielscranton.com, and also on Facebook. Go to the Events tab on Daniel's website to learn more about Daniel's upcoming events. Daniel's guest this Tuesday is Doug Baseball Guy White, and on the 10th of November, his guest is Terry Piowa. Terry is an intuitive, psychic, and astrologer. On Tuesday at noon, also 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, please join hosts. Megan Crandallmeyer and Rachel Archelaus for Radio Inspiration, Expression, and Abundance for their show, Soulfulpreneur. Spiritual business specialists Rachel and Megan will bring you inspiring conversations with people who are living their soul purpose. Frequent guests include psychic mediums, channelers, coaches, artists, and authors. They end every show with psychic readings and business coaching. Your questions about your spiritual business or life purpose journey are welcome. Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, is the show that started it all, the Enlightenment Evolution Hour with host Rob Gauthier. Rob channels Treb on the first Wednesday of each month and will take callers' questions. On the third Wednesday, we'll have special guests such as guest channelers and other metaphysical teachers. The other two Wednesdays are freestyle call-in shows to discuss whatever callers have on their minds. Tune in to Rob on Wednesday nights, and you can also find him at TrebChanneling.com and on Facebook at the Enlightenment Evolution Network group page. Rob has two special announcements. Starting on Sundays from September 14th, TrebChanneling.com offers hour-long meditation classes. Please go to TrebChanneling.com to register. 
Another project near and dear to Rob's heart is the much-anticipated sequel to the groundbreaking film Tuning In called Tuning In Now. The movie will feature channelers such as Daryl Anka and Bashar, Lee Carroll and Cryon, and our very own Rob Gautier and Tripp. Tuning in now will explore the amazing work of today's top channels and how they are helping to awaken the consciousness of the planet. This film is in fundraising stages at the moment, and with a contribution for as little as $15 all the way up to $50, you can help make sure that this film is made. Please go to Indiegogo.com, that's Indie, I-N-D-I-E, Gogo, G-O-G-O, dot com, and type in the search, Tuning In Now 2, that's the number 2, Tuning In Now with the number 2. On Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, join host Philip Malika with the Consciousness Evolution Hour. Join Philip and his special guests and co-hosts as they discuss the shift, ascension, timelines, metaphysical concepts, and the fifth dimension. Find Philip at the Consciousness Evolution 2.0 group page on Facebook and on YouTube. On Friday, the Earth Experience with your host, Kalina Angel, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific. The Earth Experience explores our soul's expansion through our human experience on Earth. Kalina will help you to navigate and expand through the exciting confusions that we are manifesting as new 5D beings. On Sundays, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Pacific, is my show about oneness. About Oneness is a weekly radio program focused on celebrating the ongoing conscious awakening of our planet and our realization of oneness. I'm an American originally from Charleston, South Carolina, now living in the Europe, The Hague, the Netherlands. I'm an integrated channel, medium, Reiki master, and metaphysical teacher. I have a varied and diverse background, including that of being a singer, dancer, writer, as well as working in the sport, nutrition, and fitness world. As a channel, I bring forward the information of my non-physical guides called Theos, whose message is always that of oneness and unconditional love. This show for me is about integrating all of my experiences and following my highest excitement, which is tapping into the truth of the universe. If you would like to find more about me and my show and my upcoming guests, as well as see many videos and channelings and teachings, you can go to aboutoneness.com. My guest on Sunday, November the 9th, is medium Annika Clausens from the Netherlands. Annika attended the world-renowned Arthur Fenley College in the UK, and as a mentor, she has Mavis Patilla. If you have questions about mediumship and tuning in to those that have passed on, have your questions ready because Annika will be live and taking callers' questions. On the Enlightenment Evolution Network 2, on Tuesdays, join host Victoria Vives at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, hosting Earth Sky People Radio, your bridge between heaven and earth. Subjects will include planet Earth becoming part of an intergalactic society, star seeds and extraterrestrial life, living in oneness with one another, with Mother Earth and with life beyond Earth, the Interstellar Alliance, also known as the Galactic Federation of Light, music, frequency, and sound healing, question and answer interviews, shamanism, ancestral wisdom, and the star nations, self-sustainative and regenerative living, and much, much more. Go to victoriavives.com forward slash radio where people can start submitting questions for upcoming shows. Victoria's show on Tuesday the 4th is Victoria's Secret to Fall in Love with Life on Earth. Special training for both star seeds and earth. On Tuesday the 11th, her guests are New Earth Music and New Earth Theater, bringing a new dimension of consciousness to music and entertainment. On Saturday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 6 p.m. Pacific, the Pied Piper and Texas Rebel hosting the show Disclosure Now. Disclosure Now is the On the Edge of Our Seats show that covers all topics of disclosure, from the world's most famous and obscure UFO cases to cryptozoology, conspiracies, and all things that go bump in the night. Pied Piper started his journey in Michigan in 1993 as a preteen seeing Bigfoot and never could get enough of investigating all things paranormal. Texas Rebel is a wild Texas man who loves the same journey and has studied these same things for years. 
join them as they cover all things in the human experience that just cannot be answered by anyone. Listen here and call in on the number 347-215-8586. Coming soon on Sundays at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Pacific, The Resonance and Tension, hosted by El Sol and Neil Gar. The Resonance and Tension show is dedicated to all things frequency and vibration. They will showcase conscious musicians who infuse frequencies into their music and have set out to uplift and raise the vibration of humanity through their music. They will have in-depth discussions with various artists about their passion, purpose, and personal journey that led them to where they are now. Additionally, they will routinely have guests on the topics of free energy, technology, and other quantum modalities and technologies that are coming into existence now. The Resonance Intention is a platform for artists, musicians, and inventors to increase awareness of their personal approach in order to contribute to the paradigm shift we are currently within. And remember, you never have to miss any show on the Enlightenment Evolution Network 1 or 2. All shows are available to listen to again immediately after they air on playback. All right, back to the show. Well, thank you for waiting patiently with us through the announcements. Uh, I am the Pied Piper. You've been tuning in to Disclosure Now. Uh, I really appreciate the listeners calling in. I I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, The number is 347-215-8586. It looks like we have another caller. Uh, we will get to them right now, but please call in. We would definitely love to hear your views. Hello, you're on with Disclosure Now. Hello, how are you this evening? Oh, I'm doing pretty good, pretty good. What would you like to share with us today? Well, um, I guess I'll start with my name. My name is Sierra, and I just thought I would call in and uh, throw in my story and kind of tell you guys how I feel about some things and see how you guys feel. Well, that would be awesome. Please continue. All righty. Well, um, since I was little, you know, we my family had gone to church and, you know, Christian. We didn't go all the time. I, I did Sunday school for a while, and then it just, things got weird, and I just stopped going. But over over time, I guess, I've kind of come to form some beliefs about how I do believe that, you know, there is, Uh, something more superior out there, I guess. I just, there's so many things out there, you know. And I kind of wanted to cue in on a topic that's really important to me. It might be a little controversial, but what's what's the fun in that, you know? Absolutely. Um, Speak up. We are hearing your voice. (laughs) Well, see, back in 2007, I lost my mom. I was 16 years old. My little brother was two weeks old when she passed away. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. In that time, it you know, there was a lot of questions asked and, you know, just tried to go to church again and reconnect. It's just some of the things I felt like the church was trying to tell me was wrong. Like, I I believe in God, but I believe that not everything in the Bible is as it should. You know what I mean? Yeah, not like, everything as is absolutely be. legit. I, I understand. Like, I, I I go back to the whole, you know, God is love. Without love, what do you have? And a, a big topic going on right now is, like, same-sex marriage and homosexuality. And I was just kind of curious what your views were. I mean, I, I, I completely support it. I mean, I, I believe on, on, like, same-sex marriage and homosexuality and having to do with the Bible and religion. Well, well, I kind of I kind of touched on that uh earlier. Basically, I'll I'll repeat kind of what I said. I said that uh most religions at least at least almost all of them have been hijacked by hateful people who hides behind fear and the fact their god is the one that's hating, not them. It's, you know, so they can avoid the responsibility or impact it may have. It's very sad. It's also, a, you know, sort of a red herring. Period. I mean, if your God hates gays or colored people or has no tolerance for other religious thoughts, then you're the bigot. Don't push it off on the, the God you worship and say that it's it's that perspective. Because, to be honest, none of us know 
the ultimate creator's business or his thoughts or its thoughts because I don't what? I would I have to believe it was not a man or a woman. How how can we I mean honestly we're, we're talking about a supreme being. How can we sit here and say yeah I know I know what they're thinking. I mean okay half the time you probably don't even know what you're thinking. You <laughs> So many thoughts in your head, it's like I, I need to pan through those thoughts. I mean, it's, it's baloney, absolute baloney. So did that did that answer your question about how I at least view gays and lesbians and, and stuff like that? Yes, yes, that answered it quite well. It's just, I guess, um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the Westboro Baptist Church. Absolutely. And they are definitely some the, haters. <laughs> they are all the controversy that surrounds them from you know, picketing concerts to, you know, going as far to say as, you know, God is grateful for all the dead soldiers and that it's this great thing. I just think I'm not trying to be like, hey, your religion is out of place, but there really is no room for that. The deep-seated hate that that, I I, I can't even say his name, um, but the deep-seated hate that, uh, I, I actually I don't recall his name. Uh, do Do you know the old man's name that 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 ran the church? I do not, unfortunately. Okay. Well, he was so full of hate. I I don't know how any how any loving God would embrace him into some paradise. I I Whoa. mean, he says God hates fags. That is what on their posters he repeats it. They actually picket uh, soldiers' funerals. It's absolutely horrible. Go ahead. It, well, actually, it's, it's more than horrible. It's horseshit because bottom line is I, I can't recall, and I really have. I, I've read the Bible from cover to cover many, many times, and I cannot recall any time where it actually says God hates something. I mean, really, I mean, he doesn't speak that he um, – there are things that he says that, uh, like, um, don't murder, those types of things, but to actually say – He's a hateful God. He, yeah. He's not a hateful God. Actually, he's a vengeful God. And, Which is different than hateful. But if you separate the New Testament from the Old Testament, there's stark differences. In, the, yeah. in, in Genesis, the first book of the Bible, like the first few chapters or whatever, is all about God wiping out bloodlines of people, just wiping them out. But that that's vent, that's different from hate. That oh, hate. Okay, I thought killing somebody was hate, but okay. <laughs> Take vengeance on somebody, okay? I uh, that's malice. Malice is hate. I, you know, I, I guess if you look at it that way, yes, it, it can be looked at that way. However, I, I just I don't see as God can be a vengeful God because you wronged him, not because he hates you. Because in that same sentence, uh, some of the greatest things, love and hope, are two of the greatest things that he gives and he wants to provide. In that aspect, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Rev, what do you feel about uh, the gays and lesbians? And have you heard of the the Westro Baptist Church? No, I haven't heard of that church, but uh, I feel there's a time and a place for everything. Uh, it's just like trying the church trying to force their beliefs onto the population. Uh, if a person chooses, you know, they're gay, that's fine, as long as it, you know, you know, as long as it don't come over into my house, because I'm not gay, so I don't really have anything against it. Yeah, it doesn't affect you personally, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't even cross your mind. That's a good point. Well, uh, was there, was there another part, uh, another question or another comment you'd like to share? Yeah, and, um, I guess my other question for you is, do you believe that you can take some things from religion and believe in them and, you know, have that be a part of your life, but things that they say is bad, you see as right? Do you do you think you can kind of Wait, take... What do you mean by that? I, I Continue. Well, continue your thought. I guess I, I'm, a, I'm a rambler. I'm kind of horrible with with this kind of stuff, but I mean, like me, you know, I, I believe in God, and I believe that he does good, and, but I also, so what, you know, I... So what huh? you were just saying, basically was your question, uh, if something is told to you to be wrong, but it feels right, 
does that make it right or wrong? Was that kind of your question? It, well, kind of along the lines of it was like, can can you pick and choose like how how you feel about it? It may be right to you, but well, it, 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 I, I it, think it comes. Feel, I think it comes down to this: what is your truth? What is your truth? Your experiences have taught you, like I said, you're the sum of all your parts. So yeah. what does your experience tell you? That's what I would go by. I wouldn't go by what any book or what what anybody tells you you should feel. Uh, just do your due diligence, you know? I mean, do, I, your, do your research. And, well, um, with that, in that, I, I totally agree. However, I, I want to add to that in the fact that... Unless, unless feeling good is running out, or you, you know, you're going to murder somebody. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. come on. Let, we're, we can't go out. Hence, we're, we're not going to kill anybody. Let, let's make that clear. We're, we're not saying go out and kill anybody. But with that being said, it, it's in our hearts. Our hearts will not lead us astray. If we truly, truly understand what we want and we truly understand what our heart is telling us, our heart will not lead us astray. It, it knows what's right from wrong. I mean, it knows that watching that person on the side of the street, it's 20 degrees below, they have no jacket on. Is it right to let that person keep walking when you're in a warm car? I mean, honestly, does, does that make you feel, does your heart say that's okay? Or does your heart say, damn, let, um, let me open my door. Come on, man. Let's let's go for a ride because I'm not gonna sit here and watch you freeze to death because uh, my heart, I, I have no truth behind that. But it, it's all it to me, and I, I may just be because I wear my heart on my sleeve. Is it, it's all about what my heart tells me to do. I, I my head guides the way, but my heart leads it. Uh, and I guess what I mean by that is. My heart knows what I need to do, but my head is going to take the steps. It's going to um, be logical about it and uh, play the steps out properly, if you will. Uh, just, just. I guess my point would be don't give your power to somebody else. You have the power to choose that for yourself, what is right and wrong and what how you feel. And it's your journey. So I, I wouldn't let anybody take that power from you would be my final point on that. Absolutely. I mean, it, nobody, nobody can tell you what to do. I mean, nobody should tell you what to do. Nobody, it's just, it's not okay. Absolutely not. Um, I, I did want to actually, there was a thought during the break that I had that popped up is part, part of the beliefs and part of the spirit, spirituality part of it is, um, I, I'm a big believer in that our dreams are leading us to different things. Uh, a prime example is I'm going through some things myself right now. One of those is my son. And just the other day, I woke up at, I don't know, about around 2 o'clock in the morning. I had this horrible dream. It almost woke me up in sweats regarding my son. And I knew right then and there that something's wrong with my son. I still right now don't know what's wrong with it. I confirm that because what I feel is I I feel I carry, uh, for lack of a better term, a telepathic um, connection with close people, uh, one of those being my mother. Uh, I'm like, I get my mother on the phone. I'm like, Mom, did you have a strange dream last night? Her words were, I don't remember my dreams, but I did wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning very uh, dissettled, which... Um, that that just confirmed the what my uh, feeling was at the time. So I I believe that we all carry connections with other people closer uh, in that aspect, and dreams are just a way to channel that because we're we're closing off our conscious mind to those things, and our subconscious mind is able to do its job what it needs. to Well, do. that reminds me of my favorite movie. I feel it. A, uh, oh man, I'm going to misquote it now, and that is absolutely horrible. I feel a tremor in the force. <laughs> oh, geez. okay. Uh, Della, uh, could you? W what do you think about a religion or a spiritual body trying to tell you what is right and wrong for you? How would you approach that? Well, usually I kind of really sit and think about it, and like I, like you guys said, follow your heart. If you feel it's the right thing to do, that's what you need to do. And 
you guys talking and stuff makes me think of the movie Dogma. Dogma, oh, yeah. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, Excellent movie. There's so many things in that movie. And the one thing, it was like, what, the archangel came down, and they were talking to who was supposed to be the descendant of Jesus. And he said, who knew that Jesus modern man, man or man would take a simple book and turn it to a religion? Yeah. He said, you don't think God has a sense of humor? Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there we go. I mean, right. technically, technically, you could take the Wizard of Oz, and in yeah. 200 years, people could be... Reading it like scripture. I mean, it's not written like the Bible, of course, but... Follow the yellow brick road. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the man behind the curtain. There's there's parables and everything. Uh, was that was that your last question, or would you like to comment on anything else before we let you go, Sierra? Um, I do believe that's it for now. I just wanted to drop in and you know, ask and see what you guys felt and let you guys know that I love the show, and I'll be listening. All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. We definitely appreciate it. You have a good night. <clears throat> but yeah, the religious topic is kind of a powder keg and I enjoy it. You know, I don't I don't discredit anybody else's beliefs. Uh I spread doubt. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I had a as an example, I had um a Jehovah witness come to my house. Now, 90 really? Not yeah, really. Ninety percent of the time, people slam the doors in their faces. And what I didn't do that. I'm a personable person. They asked if I had ever heard of my uh, of uh, Jesus Christ and was he my savior and stuff. And I said I've heard of him and no. <laughs> and um, <laughs> you know, he said, "Well, are you a religious person?" And I said, "No, I'm not. I'm spiritual." He said, "What's the difference?" And at this point, I didn't know he was Jehovah Witness or anything because I believe they've like trained these people and to not say the word Jehovah Witness. I, I didn't realize he was a Jehovah Witness until like a month later. He wanted me to bring a pamphlet to my mom and dad because they were religious. And, and I said, okay, here it is. And they said, oh, that's the Watchtower. That's Jehovah Witness. And I said, watch, oh my, and I flipped it over. Sure enough, it was Watchtower. Oh. Now, now, this guy was very accommodating. I mean, he... he not only did he believe in Christ, but he was Christ-like, and I really appreciated that because he sat in my living room. I invited him in. We sat, and he uh, wanted to share with me a few things, and I absolutely, no holds barred, told him. I said that, you know, your the Bible, the book that you feel so passionate about, I said, it's a book of fairy tales to me, sort of, in the sense that, you know, Jonah being swallowed by the whale is the same, or Noah's Ark is the same as going to look for the woman that lived in the shoe. There's got to be a giant shoe here somewhere. Well, you, you should be... But he was... Hold on, I'll let you oh, finish sorry. just a second. But he was very accommodating. He didn't get upset. He didn't get angry. Or he didn't get defensive either. Um, but something that struck me really weird, and it's like what we're doing here tonight. We're having mm -hmm. an open debate, and we're respecting everybody's opinions. But... When he left, he said, would you like to go to lunch sometime and continue our conversation? I said, I love the debate. I would be happy to to visit with you more. And he said, no, 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 no. I never debate. Well, then we have nothing to discuss. <laughs> well, here, here's, okay, you know, I, I did say that nobody is wrong, nobody is right. My I have a serious, serious problem with Jehovah's Witness, and I could be interpreting interpreting some of this stuff incorrectly but you are is, no, oh I'm of course i am right i'll be uh, told wrong no man that's go ahead cool. man i want to hear um, this well it's my understanding that jehovah's witness their base belief is only uh two thousand some odd people are actually going to heaven okay now listen i talked to this guy about that there's many stigmas attached to jehovah witness i asked him this i said okay well if only 200 some thousand are being saved i have a better chance playing the lottery you know exactly like like, like really but th this is what he told me and i didn't know this and okay. this is something that maybe uh other people don't know as as well but i asked him about that and he said no <laughs> he said this is how it works when jesus rises from the dead okay he will ri he will he will bring everybody with him that's dead he will okay. he'll, he'll bring them back to life okay in the book of revelation yeah right own out of everybody that was brought back to life with a real flesh and bone body yep. that's yep. perfect, yep. right? That'll live forever. Okay. Okay. They're allowed to live on earth forever. Only a certain amount of people are actually able to go with Jesus to 
the afterlife, which is heaven, to actually reside in heaven. There's only a certain amount, and then everybody else is still alive in their perfect bodies because, you know, uh, Christ was the victor well, against it, the devil, it, and, and you live happily ever after. But it, if you're if you're a Mormon now, New Jerusalem is going to be in Utah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, is it not, okay, is it not, am I not correct in the fact that in the book of Revelations that one, it is not when the end of days, if you will, the apocalypse, everything comes, and which is what Jehovah's Witness is speaking of, uh, that heaven is going to be on earth. It's heaven on earth. Not heaven's a separate place from earth. So uh, is that not a contradiction? But if there's heaven somewhere else out there and then they make a heaven on earth, you're like, you're grasping at straws there. It doesn't make sense. God, the Father, and, and Jesus is somewhere, right? But where, where are they at? Does, Wherever that, they're at, that's where only two hundred thousand go. Right, but what I'm, but that's where I'm saying. I mean, I don't uh, believe in, that. In the book, but, well, yeah, of course not. You don't believe anything. No, I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> well, but see, that's that's the thing with um, it, it's my understanding though, based on the book of Revelations, is that at the end of days. Is wherever heaven is right now, it's going to be where Earth is. Okay. Well, I haven't drink in the, I haven't drank that Kool Aid. Oh, I, I can't, okay. I can't go that far into into the Jehovah Witness thing. But um, uh, Rebel, have you had any experience with uh, uh, Jehovah Witnesses? Because I met one and, and not, I, I thought he was very nice. Not a whole lot. Uh, usually, the ones that show up to my door, they they don't stay around very long. Slam the door right in their face, right? Yeah, I, I agree with that one. Yeah, you slam the door, you know, Della. I show, uh, well, take well, my shirt off, and they see all my tattoos, and they... Sorry, Rib. Go ahead, Rib. Start over. Oh, I, I didn't hear... Uh, well, you know, when the Joe Hoods wouldn't show up at my door, I show up, uh, I take my shirt off, and they see all the tattoos, and then they don't stick around very long. Well, but you don't have, like, big swastika tattoos or anything like that, right? Or do you? Well, no, I have, but I have a lot of skulls and skeletons. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify that for everybody listening that, you know, <laughs> you took your shirt off and they didn't want to come in. Well, yeah, I wanted to <laughs> clarify that. Go ahead, Bella. Well, I want to answer the door with a dildo in my hand and tell them I'm busy. Nice. Woo! That, That'd yeah, do it. That would well, do it. You know, I, I do I do have to be one hundred percent honest. Every Jehovah's Witness that I've come across, I've answered the door, they're they're hundred percent polite. I don't slam the don't get me wrong, I don't slam the door in their have face. You, I hear what they have to say. I don't sit down with them. Okay. But what well, I was gonna add, did, have any of them asked what your beliefs were and then Never. Okay. Well, I, I eventually had to break off the type of relationship, if you want to call it that, in some strange way. <laughs> this guy kept coming over. And what? he kept and, and he kept for real though, he kept what? coming over. And he kept coming in, and we'd sit down, and he would want to talk to me about something. And we wouldn't necessarily debate, but he would tell me what it is to believe in Jehovah Witness. And then I would tell him why I didn't believe it, okay? And he was always pleasant, but I had to basically call it off because it started to go nowhere. And I realized it was his job to save my eternal soul. Yeah. And I, I wrote him an email, and I politely said, you know, if you are coming here... For the specific reason to save my soul, please don't waste your time. There's other people that may swallow that pill. I'm not one of them. They're going to send a car. If you wouldn't have cut it off, they'd send a car to come pick you up and bring you back home after church. No, I know it. He, he, I know it. They pressed me to go, but I told them, I said, they don't want somebody like me in church. They don't want to... Religions usually yeah, don't want... They don't. <laughs> religions usually don't want critical-minded... Uh, deep thinking people. Because if you tell me you are going to go somewhere fantastic when you die as long as you follow these rules, and I say, you know, who's been there and come back? And nobody has? Like, I'm not going to take you seriously. Like, you know, there's all those preachers and, and you know, this this is, there's probably charlatans and hucksters in every religion, but basically Scientology takes the cake for me. Uh, Scientology, the Mormon religion, uh, I have respect for all religions, but I have respect for the Scientology, uh, the people who are in that religion and the people that are in the Mormon religion, but I have no respect for their actual like teachings. Because okay. 
Scientology it was was basically a religion that was started by Ron L. Hubbard, who was a science fiction writer who wrote, you know, alien books and this and that. And then he started, he wrote a book called Dianetics and all this stuff. And it, he generated a a moneymaker around him is what he did. Um, and uh, he he was a huckster. And he he has a whole lot of people. Now that's that's the religion where they're going to cure anything and everything over prayer. Yeah, well, uh, the the Scientology people say that if you're mentally ill, it's actually thetans which are attaching to your soul wow. and are are making you mentally ill. So there's no really mental illness. It's these thetans, and you got to audit yourself. Years ago, I worked in a nursing home, mm-hmm. and a young man that was in there had just about every bone in his body broken. Really? Ow. And he was bedridden, and he'd use, like, his tongue for uh, doing things with the computer. He yeah, typing talk. with his tongue? He could talk, and he could move his eyes and stuff like that. But otherwise, from the neck down, every bone in his body was broken. Wow. And the Ouch. only reason they did not set the bones was because his parents said, oh, we're going to pray over him. Oh, wow. They Such, said oh. they said prayer is going to fix yeah. his bones, oh, yeah. and they the doctors get, can't touch him because the good Lord's going to do it. Bullshit. And I just about wanted to vomit when I heard that. Yeah, that's that's that kind of disgusting. So uh, it, 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 uh, I didn't get a chance to get into the Mormons, but I believe there's plenty of time left, and we have another caller. Uh, let me turn the mic on. And hello, you're on with Disclosure Now. How are you doing tonight? Hello. hello. I believe we're having difficulties, maybe? Hello. All righty. I guess that caller wasn't interested in talking. <laughs> it's, it's all, I, I want to actually touch on something. Uh, the the whole belief in prayer and things like that. Prayer is great. It, it's uh, it touches on something else that I believe in. I mean, and, sending well wishes out into the universe. That's and, that's totally acceptable to me. And, and that's that's what I was just about to touch on. Is that is I believe that we have the ability to. Um, we have the ability to put out a a energy, if you will, uh, regarding I I let, let's say we run into a financial uh, problem, and we sit there and we're like, okay, I need a hundred dollars because I my car's busting up and and I need to fix something. Maybe it's an alternator and. I uh, I just I don't have the money for it, but you know what? I I know I need the money, but if you sit here and you stress over it, you stress over it, you stress over it, you're just gonna destroy yourself. You're gonna get yourself depressed because you're you're not gonna find the money. However, with that that energy that you're putting out there, if you do it in a positive manner and you're not obsessing over it. I do believe that that answer is going to be given to you if you're open to receiving that. Uh, I'm also a big believer in that everything happens for a reason. We may not understand it right now at this moment, but everything happens for a reason. Um, I'm trying to think of an example that recently happened to me. Um, I, I've moved in many different... I've been all across this country, and I... Uh, there's only a couple of states I actually haven't physically been through, uh, many states that I've lived in, but every time I move, it has been something significant in my life has happened at that point, and then I'm like, oh, this is why this actually went down. But if I'm not open and susceptible to that and seeing what's actually going on, I'm also not learning from my uh, life experiences at the same time either. Um in that regard. Right on. Well, you know, uh, there's a lot of things to this religion thing, and um, a lot of people have their have their personal beliefs, and, you know, uh, I'm not about to tell them that they shouldn't believe or shouldn't do that. Everybody's on their own journey. Everybody uh, ends up where they need to be. Um, so that's that's basically my, my point of view. Uh, wh- what's your overall feel for religion, uh, rebel in in uh in whatever detail you'd like to explain it to us in. Well 
as far as religion goes today, for me, I it don't really do a whole lot for me. I, I'm kind of like you and a lot of other people. I, I believe there's a higher power somewhere. What that higher power is, I don't know. But as far as the, the Bible and the, the, the way it was written, who written it, I no longer, you know, I don't follow that route any longer. Right. Well, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, well, I don't know if I want to actually share that story. Why don't one of you share a story real quick, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll think if I want to share this. <laughs> right, right. Well, like we, we all have our own stories. Um, I, I guess I'm running out of not necessarily thoughts, just uh, putting my thoughts together regarding uh, religion. But I, I went back to the fact that I believe in those energies. I. Uh, Della was speaking about the gentleman who was, uh, every bone in his body was pretty much broken, and so he wasn't going to move, but his parents, his family was sitting there saying, no, no, don't treat him, because we'll, we'll pray over him. Yes, I believe prayer has a healing factor, as well as healing is also in our mind as well, but to sit there and say medicine can't do anything is horseshit. You, you need. Thank you. There are times where you need to go and seek out. You can't just sit there and let it happen. You know, like the Scientologists say, "Oh, we're going to pray over him." Okay, fine, but let the doctor set the poor guy's bones. Well, that that he act- can walk and feed himself and go to the bathroom and. Well, with that actually touches on that brings up another thought regarding that is okay, we we deal with things with prayer, prayer, yes, we we have to in, somewhere in the Bible on uh, in my teaching or not my teachings, but the things that I've been taught in Christianity is you have a problem, pray about it, put it in God's hands and put it out there. Let it go. In other words, don't obsess about it. However, you cannot stop actively dealing with it. You cannot say, here, God, here you go, and then go sit on your couch and watch TV all day long. It's just not how it's going to work. You actually have to be active about it. Your mind has to be working out the solution, and what's going to happen is that solution is going to present itself in some fashion, but you have to be open to getting that solution uh, because I mean, sitting on the couch watching TV all day long, just it's not going to find a solution to your problem. But at the same time, obsessing about it isn't going to find a solution because all you're doing is this is a problem, this is a problem, that I'm, I'm not looking for that solution. So it's a, in a positive manner, putting out that positive energy, trying to find that solution is is what I guess what I'm going <clears throat> with that. And that goes in the fact that Allow the doctors to do their job. Doctors can't cure everything. Obviously, we have cancer. We have AIDS. We have all these different ailments that we just cannot cure yet. And the key word being yet. But we're actively pursuing um, cures for them. But at the same time, we're also, you constantly, what we see ribbons about cancer. We see uh, different people, different types of ailments that are actively being pursued for any problem or um, are actively being pursued, but at the same time, the religious community is praying about these solutions. So it's it's being an active, being active in that um, problem and not just sitting back and saying, oh, well, we know it's a problem. It, it'll get solved. It, it, it doesn't work that way. You, you can't just sit back and let the problem solve itself. Okay, uh, well, I decided to go ahead and share this. It's a little personal. Uh, It's definitely part of my journey. Uh, This is one of the the parts that sum me up. When I was 13 years old, I had my first sexual encounter. Um, I was a a devout Christian at the time. I believed in my soul burning in hell. I believed that I, you know, my soul was in jeopardy. I still had the encounter. But I did feel that afterwards I had uh, 
severe, severe, uh, almost a depression. I, I, it was, it was all the, what am I, what am I looking for? The word I'm looking for, um, Oh, I can't believe I can't I think can't of the word. That's mind. ridiculous. Sorry, but... Uh, but anyway, I felt that I had I had wronged my God somehow, and you'd been damned. It, right. But all the dogma that was attached to the Christianity thing, it uh, I I can't think of the word. This is ridiculous. Um. Anyway, what what would we call that? We'd call that a brain fart. Yeah, it happens uh, from time to absolutely. time. Absolutely, swollen brain fart. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so I had I had this uh, this feeling that that you know I was going to burn in hell and everything else, and and this started to kind of awaken my journey on, you know this this uh, this feeling I had wasn't wasn't good, and it, it was almost a dread. And uh, anyway, I came to the realization quite quickly that uh, that the Bible definitely contradicted itself. Like we're we were created perfect. We were good. All these things, and there's many animals in the animal kingdom. For an example, that uh, when they procreate, it's not fun. It's not. Um, it's not pleasurable. It's for one thing, and that is to procreate. Well, um, well with that too, is also in the Bible. Is... But he gave it to us. If he created us perfect, he gave us the. He, he gave us the parts. Go the, go it, forth and multiply. I, nowhere does it say, hey, don't have fun while doing so. I mean, we, we're all, look, sex is pleasurable. If you don't say sex is pleasurable, I, I honestly believe. There you go. Devin doing says you haven't met me yet. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Look, it gets better <laughs> now and that's better funny. and better. Now that's funny. <laughs> Isn't it though? But you know what? I, I, I won't even say I just like the Energizer Bunny because I'm not that good. But... Um, anyway, moving on. <laughs> How in the world did we just get to that? Well, I was sharing something, but, but but anyway, he made us the way he did, and he did make it pleasurable. Now, when you are a Catholic, say, you, it, it's only for one purpose, and that is to make babies. It, it just so happens to be fun. That's a side effect because it's really for babies. That that that's what the Catholic Church believes. They don't want you to take birth control, even though it will regulate periods. It, it it's actually good for the female body in some senses. It's also good for the thyroid. Yeah, good for the thyroid. All that I stuff. Didn't know that. Yeah, but the Catholic Church is also double dipping because they say, hey, you can't have birth control because that is a sin. That is a license for sex. That's how they look at it. But if you are a man and you have problems obtaining an erection, you can have a pill. We'll give you a pill for that. That How ain't a problem. How many pills do you need to get up today? Uh, none. But I'm just saying, like, they 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 don't discredit a boner pill, but they're absolutely against birth control. You, I mean, something on that stance is ridiculous. Well, that that also goes, and, and it goes back to my base belief that organized religion is really a joke because it's not about bringing the people to you and saying, "Here, this this is what I believe that you need to believe this." Uh, and hence, the whole fact of it's okay for birth. Uh, it's not okay for birth control, but it's okay to uh, get the boner pill. I. Uh, so, I mean, with, with that, the organized religion, it, it's caused, to me, it's caused more wars, it's caused more strife and conflict than any other issues. I mean, nine times out of ten, if a nation, it, let, let's say we go back to during the Crusades, if the nations actually sit there and talk to each other instead of saying, hey, well, God says, I, I need to take you, you're the Holy Land. Baloney. Well, what what's the true real difference? There there was some base difference that could have been diplomatically resolved instead of saying, "Well, God says I need to go take care of you." Yeah, but that part of the world has been in chaos and has been in conflict for a very, very, very long time. Just look at what's happening there now. Well, um, I'm not saying all all, all Muslims are. Uh, a kill the infidel type of religious zealot, but there is an awful lot of them. Um, and, you know, we we fought wars to try to stop this ideology, and I, I'm sorry, you can't fight a war of thoughts with bullets. It's not, it's not going to work. The, the only way to do that is to clearly be absolutely horrendous and kill men, women, and children, because then no children grow up hating you, 
No, no women are there to raise children hating you. And, you know, I, I'm not saying do that. I'm just saying that that's the type of, you know, stigma there well, is. Well, we, we talked about earlier, too, the fact that um, that you, you personally don't necessarily believe the things that are in the Bible, but you also speak about the conflicts that are going on over, and just say, Jerusalem. But in the Bible, once the last time that they... Uh, so the you Jews, believe... Okay, let me just say this. You believe Israel has a right to be there because the Bible says they're the children... Not children necessarily. People. Not necessarily. But what I'm saying is we can't discredit everything that is said in the Bible because the conflicts that are going on right now in Israel has been stated that is going to continue going on in Israel uh, for whatever reason. Again, I'm no scholar and I don't know, don't have the details, but I know uh, that it has stated that that it is not going to be occupied. There's fingers to be pointed at all sides, but I have to say that there's something disgusting about Israel saying, we're the chosen people, you Palestinians have to leave your land, we're going to bulldoze your houses down with you inside them, Oh, and, totally. You know, and and I can understand why somebody would would be at the end of their rope and want to strap bombs on and go in there and do something horrendous just to end it. You know, because oh. their existence isn't very good. But but that is the type of stuff that that dredges up awful, uh, awful, almost ancient type, you know, evil, which is like you know, my God says this. So I'm going to, you know, you can exactly. justify any horrendous act by saying God told me to do it. Oh, pretty yeah, I mean, much. And it's happened since the beginning of time. And, and it'll probably continue to happen whether we like it or not. I mean, it's just the way things are. It, it goes back to your statement about fear. What we fear, we need to put an explanation to because we need to understand our own fears in some fashion. Well, I believe that re religion was, you know, a very... Uh, prominent thing when it comes to people fearing death. And a lot of young people aren't religious, but they do seem to get religious closer to death because, you know, the final curtain draws what's next. I don't know. Like, oh, shit. Anybody that says they know well, is okay. a huckster, well, here, in my mind. Well, here's a question for you, which uh, a lot of uh, Christians, if you will, don't necessarily believe. Do you believe that there is a... Uh, have we lived prior lives, future lives... That this is, or is this the only life that we're ever going to live? Well, I can say this. I can't remember any. That, but that wasn't my question. Do you believe that there are... I don't know. That's my that's my answer. I don't know. Okay. I can't uh, remember any. Can you? Now, me personally, no. But I do know that there have been documented circumstances where people are pulling out... Hey, they will go be put I, under hypnosis. I think that anything is possible. I know that there are... Tons of things that we can't taste, touch, smell, feel like we can't, exactly. you know, okay. it, it, but but that doesn't mean that it's not there. Just like UFO abduction, just right. like Bigfoot sightings, all these things, all it takes is one individual to not be a huckster. One individual that is not exaggerating, didn't have a misidentification, and is basically telling you the 100% honest to God truth, then it is a reality. Right. Well, that's that's where I was going. Is it because I I I personally do believe that I've lived prior lives and I and I have future lives. Now, in that base belief, I also believe that for each life that we live, we um we there's something that we need to learn or on uh, before we can proceed to say the next on uh, point of evolution, if you will, or the next realm. Okay, well, let me let me put it this way. This might blow some of your minds. I have said this before on um, a different show on, on the EEN network, I believe. Uh, I don't think it was this one, but let's say, like what uh, the guest that called in, Ro uh, Roxanne, I believe was her name? It, it was Okay, anyway, um, basically, what if we are a fractal of God. Let's say God is just a, a large entity, and this entity wanted to explore or experience everything there was to experience. He created this large universe, and then he said, hey, I want to play some part in this universe, right? Mm -hmm. And this big entity broke itself into trillions of fractals, or trillions and trillions. There's probably not a number of how many fractals there probably would have split into. Mm -hmm. But each piece is a small part of the whole, okay? Right. Now, I'm a fractal, you're a fractal, Dell is a fractal, all of our listeners are a fractal. Now, when we die, 
that little bit of fractal goes back to the source. Now, once that source, once everything, even matter, like trees are alive, mm -hmm. even that would be a fractal, okay? Exactly. Once that entity reclaims all of its fractals, I can remember being the entity. I can remember being you. You can remember being me. Della can remember being me. I can remember being Della. And I, well, can, I can remember all of the experience she had in a collective form. I can remember everything that I did. That... Well, sir, that, would that, be beautiful. And, and you're you're absolutely right, but that also is uh, another belief uh, that of something that uh, is part of Judaism that was lost a uh, long, long, long time ago that we're just now trying to find a way to, and, and that's the base belief of the Tree of Life. Well, did you know, okay, who was the first, uh, if you go back to the Christian Bible, okay, who, or, or the uh, Judeo-Christian, okay, okay. Uh, who was the first woman in, in the Garden of Eden? Lilith. Eve. Wrong. Lilith. Lilith. Lilith was a woman that was taken Lilith. from, that, that was not taken from the rib. She was taken from the earth. Okay? Okay, no, this I'm is a book. now. Oh, this, yeah. Yes, this was oh, a yeah. book. This was a book that was basically excluded from the Bible by the King James Version. Okay. okay? Now, but people studied it, and people preached it, and everything, just like it was... The book, right, you know. Right. So, okay, so God says, I, poof, I made Adam, and he is perfect. He is beautiful. Yep. Adam looks at all the animals and says, they have companions. I want a companion. And God says, oh, all right, I can do that. Poof. And he creates Lilith, right? He creates Lilith the exact same way he created Adam. Okay. okay. Now, Lilith, when Lilith would not submit which this comes back into control in religion. Lilith did not submit to Adam. She would not I, let I, Adam be on top. I she think was I on top. I hearing something about that. Yes. Okay. And then basically God punished her, and she was in a river like or something for so many... A anyway, what ended up happening is Lilith basically became a deity that, that people worshipped way back when, okay? But Lilith messed up. He wiped his hands clean with Lilith, and he started over. And this time, he took a piece of the man... And made the woman. Okay. So now the man has dominion over the female. And and I that thought that is control. Yeah, and that and is absolutely diabolical. And, and you you know I guess I I, I have heard on uh, a story of Lilith. It, it just it didn't click in the get go once you started saying about the subjugation. But and you know a lot of religion is it, again it goes back to what we were talking about earlier about subjugation. Religion is about control. It, it's about this, and not necessarily you. You can talk to Christians and they'll sit here and say that on uh, the on uh, based on the first chapter in Genesis, speaking of Adam and Eve, uh, that Eve was created for man and that Eve should I uh, um abide by man's rule, if you will. Uh, but then they'll sit there and say, well, that doesn't necessarily mean that woman should walk behind man. Um, which, you know what, that's right. But that's that's empowering women in the aspect that it, don't don't get I'm me wrong, I, I believe that women have the power. But that, that in the aspect is saying, well, you should support your um, man, yes, but your man still has final rule, is what that's talking about, as where the story of Lilith speaks of the fact that um, woman isn't bound by her man, and that does not have to be sub subjugated by her man. She has her own mind, her own free will. She chooses what she does. If the man is... Uh, blatantly being stupid, well, I, I would not expect that woman to follow that man. Well, Catholics didn't believe in divorce. I mean, they still they may still frown on it. But. Oh, yeah, definitely. I know a lot of Catholic people that can no longer take communion because their divorce was not approved. And, and well, uh, that's, uh, that's communion, in a lot the, of different... The, the pretending to drink the blood of a 2,000-year-old yeah. God and eat his flesh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but the, that whole divorce thing, it follows with a lot of not just on uh, Catholics, uh, it follows with, uh, if I'm correct, it follows with Baptists. It follows with some of the other um, not uh, so I prominent. Think, I think a lot of them frown on it, but I think it, it, Catholics just... It, if you if you oh, go, let, let's say you go into a Baptist church, you go in as a married couple, mm -hmm. okay, and then during that time you're there, you two get divorced, one of y'all are going to be shunned out of that church, if not both. Wow. 
because it is yes, it is absolutely frowned upon. Uh, but in the same token, that pastor doesn't. I mean, in his base beliefs, it's not okay to divorce. There needs to be a. Uh, you need to be able to work it out. Guess what? You have to work it out because my Bible says it's not okay to divorce. So well, the Bible say, "Tell death do you part." Right now, me, I'm I'm a man of my word. I, I was right, married but, for, but but see, I would have to say that before those vows, there was other vows that absolutely that, that are like covenants between the people, not not a mythical god but between the two people that are that are saying it to each other like there's a lot more to it than than the end part you oh, know what absolutely. i mean like like uh to be what is it true do they say yeah, true yeah. now or faithful or uh, yeah it's something something along those lines but i mean most everybody i got no understands the vows i got married and i'm divorced so i'm and, obviously not a catholic <laughs> well and i've been married i was married 10 years that's where i was going uh but i i when I told my wife till death do us part, that's exactly what I meant. And, and I put through, I Same went here. through a lot of stuff. At time after time after time, she cheated on me. Time after time, and, and you know, I, I also have kids, that, and I spoke earlier about in, in somewhat of a battle with my son. Uh, that that goes into the fact that. Part of that was I, I was not going to put my kids through that, but it was ultimately to the fact that I gave this woman my word. Uh, I didn't cheat on her. Uh, there were times I got really close to that line, but instantly once I got to that line, it was like, I can't do this. This, this is going to hurt that person. I, I'm not going to be okay with that. So it's uh, being a man of my word, I strongly believe in those vows, so I, I did everything I could to avoid the divorce. Right. But that didn't mean uh, I feel so much better now that I'm divorced because I'm not going through that mental problem, if you will, and, and the constant heartache that comes in with it because I truly love this woman. But she totally and absolutely destroyed me. Yeah, well, I can't I can't sign up for any religion that would subjugate its people, put, put men over women. Uh, it's... It's disgusting the, the the way some of that plays out. And um, when I was young, my parents on Sundays would watch the pastors that would be speaking from their pulpit, but they'd have cameras on them and stuff. It was, uh, oh, the yeah, the, the tele uh, the telemarketing pastors, okay, yeah. where you send in money and oh, we're, you oh. send in money, you can reserve your place in heaven, you can buy the DVDs. Like, I mean. It, it's 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 quite sad. I don't think that anybody that is going to send in money um, or tithe, they pay their tithe. Um, well, that that's the other thing about religion. Religion is is about give me your money. Uh, give me your money. Give me your put your booty right here. And it's this not it, it's not all about that. But there no. are hucksters. There are hucksters like Benny Hinn. Okay. I cannot stand this man. Benny well, Hinn. Is one of them pastors that goes on TV and he's like, he's got a crippled spine. I'm gonna put my hands on this boy. He will be walked. He will be healed. And they fall over and shake and they oh. stand up and they're fine. Of course. Yeah. That yeah, absolute <laughs> gibberish. What do you well, think about that, Rev? Have you seen that Benny Hinn guy? I can't stand I him, can't, dude. Hey, I, I'm like you. I can't stand that dude. If that ain't man, if that ain't fake, there's something wrong with me. <laughs> right, yeah. If 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 he's truly producing miracles and we just can't see it, I guess we're we're lost, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm lost. Heck yeah. Well, you know, with that, uh, as far as I uh, no, it's not all about the money. But you know what? That goes back to another statement I made earlier regarding the church. Uh, without money, that church can't maintain itself. It, it can't pay the electric bill. Well, where's this money coming from? It, it it ain't coming out of the pastor's pocket. Oh, here here we go with another one. How much money do a pastor really make? How much money does that man really need? Uh, well, first of all, they pay no taxes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yet they're driving around three. What was that? At the church, I'm not sure about the man himself. No, he he does not because he is a pastor. No, he okay. does not. 
on. Well, I'm not saying his house. Maybe his house he has to pay taxes on, but the church itself well, and, why, and why everything they do is tax-free. Why would you put it in the name of the church and live in that house? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guarantee that happens. And, yeah. and not to mention they're driving they around con- $300,000 Hummers. If that congregation meets in his house once a week or or yeah. once a month, that now becomes a church. Yes, it does. And, and, again, it's about bringing them to you. It's not about you going to them, and that's such horseshit because you go to the masses. You go preach the word of God. You go here. You go there. No, not, hey, you come here. I got something to tell you. Or you, come okay, here. I'll tell you something. Jesus never preached against gays, lesbians, or anything. What he did preach against, though, was being rich. If you were rich, you're in trouble. And, and you know, uh, if, if I, I guess if you believe the, the, the Bible and you believe the New Testament and that is your religion and everything, if you are a wealthy person, you need to become not wealthy immediately. <laughs> you, yeah, you, exactly. You need to go and do your good deeds <laughs> and to share your stuff because Jesus clearly preaches against being rich. Uh, it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than well, for a rich many, man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. How many times did Jesus, uh, based on uh, all the New Testament, how many times did he go into a church and knock over the uh uh, the tables where they're collecting the taxes from the people. Yeah, he supposedly did that once, and yeah, uh, it, it was the money changers at the temple. But still, they were bringing in currency yeah. and they were changing it and stuff, and you had to basically pay to get it in. And yeah, it was it was it, it was it was probably it was a huckster, just like Benny Hinn going, you know, rise, crippled child, I'll heal this boy. Yeah, you know, I feel, I feel the same way about like Oral Roberts, Billy Gay. Oh yeah, Billy Graham. All them televangelist people. Just, it, 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 there, there was the name. I think you were trying to uh, pick that out. Televangelism. Oh, uh, and you know, evangelism itself is is a good thing because in that point you are going out to the masses, and that's exactly what they're doing. They're taking their tent. And they're they're going from town to town, and they're bringing the word of God to that person instead of saying, "Hey, come to my church." Or whatever the case may be, which in that fact, I, I strongly uh, back the evangelism. I don't, with the televangelism, it, they cool. use the TV to reach the masses, but they're still yeah, not doing, they're, they're not, not going out. Right. Yeah, well, that's the because biggest they, brainwashing thing we have on the planet is TV. Go ahead, Doug. It, it, isn't well, it, though? Okay, like Billy Graham, Oral Roberts, and I... I Who's even, that one guy that got caught having sexual relations with a man uh, a, a, over Tammy speed? Baker's Jimmy wife. Baker. Was that yeah. his name? Yeah. I think wow. So. Yeah. But these people, they're going out and they're, send me money, send me money, send me money. What are they doing with that money other than dressing up nice and making their church golden altars? Well, and who, had golden golden, who, the, who had the gold-plated faucets and the gold toilet? And the, one of them guys did. Um, I'm not sure which one. All I know. I I, I don't want to say Billy Graham, but it, I I would I think it was him, but I can't be for certain. Don't take that as gospel. Well, um, there's one of them stood at, in front of the cameras with all these hundreds and or hundreds of thousands or millions of people, at, and confessed to being a uh, adulteress, having a mistress. Yeah. You know, so and then they want to beg for money and think they're holier than thou people? Oh, the holier than thou? That that goes back to the judging now because hey, I oh, I so dislike the holier than thou person. They they'll come to you, I'm better than you because well, oh, guess what? I got good clothes or because I believe them in God. Just stepping up and saying I'm better than you makes them ungodly. So. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. So what would you guys think of there's a minister that I know He's been divorced two or three times, and he's working on his third or fourth wife. Yeah. Is that the same minister that, that was helping uh, counsel a couple, and he yep. ended up stealing yep. the guy's old lady? Yep. He was counseling a married couple to help them stay together, and they landed up getting divorced, and he married the ex-wife. Wow. So, what? Talk about they, abuse. Talk about abuse of power. Divorced. They are now divorced, and he's working on another woman. Wow. Using his religion to uh, usher in the next victim, so to speak. Yeah. Okay, well, here's another thing. So Let, that, I quit going to that church. Well, I don't blame you one bit. I would have definitely, like, once I found that out, gee, nope, I'm done. But here's another thing. Cults. 
I mean, cults are based in religion. And how many are like, oh, you know what, let's drink this Kool-Aid and guess what? Oh, we're all dead. Ouch, that sucks. Really? Why? Because God told you to? Told you to kill everybody because nobody else is coming to you? Or, or what? Rep, do you have any thoughts on the cults? Yeah, real quick, Rep, yeah, do you have any thoughts on some of the history. some of those cults? Go ahead. Yeah, stay away from them and don't drink that <laughs> Kool-Aid. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, do not drink the Kool-Aid. That That's probably a good parting thought. Uh, yeah, right. You know, uh, another thing about religion is the new spirituality. And I want to touch on this just real quick, you know. If you follow spiritual teachers that are totally spiritual, they're not religious, um, and you listen to their messages, almost every single one of them uh, do it touches on the Jesus subject. But... I don't believe Jesus was a physical person that walked the earth. I don't. I believe he's an amalgam of many people. But instead of the new religion, the the new spiritual type religion, the uh, there's probably a much better term for it. But uh, the new the new spiritualists uh, they still use the Christ figure. They still incorporate it into their dogma, so to speak. They incorporate it into their message so that it doesn't offend or put a bad taste in somebody's mouth that they don't believe in God the Father and Jesus as written in the Bible. They they weave it in. They weave it in subtly um, so that they can avoid, uh, you know, the stigma of not touching on it or not believing in it. Um, now, do you have anything to say about that? Uh, nothing that pops into my head right off the top. Okay. Um, but now I want to talk about one more thing, and we have three, almost a little less than four minutes left. Uh, Ezekiel's wheels. Was it a UFO, or did he see God? I swear I, he saw an E.T. craft that came down. Absolutely. The, the way it speaks of a fire coming out of the sky, I mean, honestly, can can we really... we we got to look at what knowledge they had then. What could they clear, definitely compare it to? They they didn't have the things that we have. We have uh, frisbees out now that we we classify them as discs. So when we think and try and put in terms of a UFO that whatever we see in that sky we put it as a disc or something along those lines. Whatever it is that people it's based on the information they have at the time. So that fiery wheel in the sky definitely was a UFO. Oh no, it landed. And beings came out of the craft. Exactly. I mean, you know, it, it, it's absolutely an ET encounter. If <laughs> no, uh, it's kind of counterintuitive for me to say, "Oh, Ezekiel saw a UFO," when I don't believe that most of the stuff in the Bible even occurred. But I have to say that if it did occur, I tend to think that that was most likely an ET encounter, and he explained it in the only way he could. Uh, Reb, real fast, you uh, you know of the Ezekiel story. What do you think, man? Was that was that a God encounter or an ET encounter, if it happened at all? If it happened at all, that was definitely an ET encounter. Somebody, Absolutely. some alien flew down and landed, and that's the only way they knew how to describe it. Absolutely. And Ezekiel, um, I'm trying to think if it was Ezekiel or not, but one of the prophets got taken up to heaven. He didn't even die, but he was basically abducted, or he went willingly. He was a contactee, if you, if you will. Uh, he he actually ascended to heaven uh, without dying. And, and that's was where, that Ezekiel? I, I think it was. I, I could be wrong on that, but that's also where a lot of the Book of Revelation comes from is that ascension. Right, but Revelation is basically just letters that were written and sent out around Rome during the the like prime of the Roman occupation. Right, but... It, they were all, discussing Armageddon as the fall of the Roman Empire. Right, but this is all coming... Uh, and you're abs- Well, I didn't look at it that way, but... And you're, you're absolutely no, if you right. No, if you put it in... If you put it in a historical context, Revelation explains the fall of Rome. They talk about the seven hills or the seven whores, and, you know, uh, it, it is. It's describing Rome and the fall of Rome, but you can take it just like you said earlier, in any in any darn way you want. Exactly. Well, all right. This has been Disclosure Now. I was your host, the Pied Piper. And the Texas Rebel.
and we appreciated you all tuning in. Thank you. Thank you for bearing with us and accepting this powder keg of a topic we had tonight. And uh, thank you for listening through the EEN Network announcements. There's many nice shows coming up. And I believe it's going to be the 22nd. Reb and I will have Michael Horn on the air. Uh, he has championed the Billy Meyer story. And Billy Meyer was a contactee. And he lives in Switzerland. Uh, we will get into that on the 22nd. Thank you all for tuning in. And have a good night.